everybody. Community and Economic Development Committee. Um, I'm John Wellington. Dick Trenny. Pete Peterson. Terry Schoenthal, Kirk Lane. Ryan Yelker, Can I be honest? Kirk's office. Eric McConnell, OECD. Jenna. Jay Alteen, JDW Council. Mark Lesnar, with the Architects. Uh, Jed Smith with Dan Cook. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we got agenda here. Any changes or anything? Mr. Chair, I was going to suggest that we move the Kirkwood um, issue up just after the old business because I think the um, licensing draft is going to take a little bit of time to go through, and I wouldn't want Mr. Sakar to come and then not have us not get to that.
in this one it is shown, and so you might this map might be easier to look at just to see the effects of the cooking the housing. And Erica, can you and or Tina uh, export these in PDF format? These are PDF, so I can email them. Perfect. And we'll get a, They were only finished yesterday, so we didn't really get a chance to get them posted. Well, I'll maybe post them on the committee website. Are you doing now? Uh, where they actually have the buildings and operations, or where they have land? I think this is just existing buildings and operations. Um, they sent us a, docu a, a, a spreadsheet, and it had vacant properties on there, and I think I told Terry not to map those, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'll get that clarified. It looks like just properties. Including vacant? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you have, uh, yeah, if you look at Cook Inlet's 36, it's been our properties, which are vacant. Okay. They're indicated. Okay, that. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. This doesn't include their little houses here and there either. Mm -hmm. It does. The seals are that step over in the view. I guess that is one of the seals sponsor the houses. <laughs> but most of those are residential. I mean, they still have a buffer that extends into some commercial areas. Is there any new ownership yet? Yeah, because you don't see that on here. Um, there's only two. No, there's only really one, well, two spots that you can see over where you could have a marijuana facility. And one's out by Birchwood Airport where there really isn't any residential, and the other is up by the Atlanta Power Plant. So we didn't even map that because since they have a separation from residential, a thousand foot from residential, it really covers the whole area. Right. Yeah, so there wasn't really any point. But it takes big time to start. Yes, it does. Not and I think if you look over here, you can see that that would affect existing um, existing and proposed facilities. Did they meet and just how they brought in again and they said this is a problem or not? No, so they um, they did second email and I did invite representatives to come to this meeting and they said they talked about it internally and they don't feel the need to be included. Now the protected language. Um, they they were more concerned about kind of the flip side where they wouldn't be permitted to go near a marijuana facility and I said no that's not the situation I don't think that will ever be the situation um, but that was a much greater concern for them. Did, did uh, HSC have um, We never really had that conversation. Who did you talk to? Probably Mark Romick or at least I start with him. So you'll see on page um, 13 that as it sits right now, and I bolded the significant text, that right now we are saying that uh, um, tribal housing authority would not be considered a public housing authority, which would maintain the status quo. So that's kind of how it reads right now. Hey, Erica, that's it. Chairman, not to upend uh, your presentation. Um, I'd like to read an email from Mark Romick on this topic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because we've asked in the past uh, how it would impact them. And so um, it was focused around their, their mixed use properties. We we're envisioning a scenario where in a mixed use agency property, a, a retail establishment could, could be located. Uh, H HFC's position on marijuana retail sales and mixed use family mixed-use multifamily projects uh, financed by, by HFC is currently HFC requires all multifamily projects to be operated in compliance with state and federal laws. Further, HFC is barred from financing property that does not meet local zoning at the time the property was for the project was constructed. The authorizing statute for mixed-use financing includes specific language. This is their ability to finance mixed-use properties. Um, <clears throat> includes specific language that prohibits HFC financing certain types of commercial use related to tobacco and alcohol sales, substance abuse for treatment, and adult entertainment. The HFC board further defined commercial use to, pre uh, to preclude medical, industrial, and correctional uses. Lastly, financing of our mixed use projects <clears throat> must be consistent with providing additional affordable housing and therefore would require market information on how these two uses 
on these two uses in determining any kind of compatibility. In summary, as of date of this email, retail sales of marijuana are barred by state and federal law. The legislature has indicated that certain uses are not compatible with the mission of the corporation HFC uh, to increase affordable housing. So in essence, they're saying, um, not really saying much, but it, the way that uh, we have interpreted that is that because so much of their function in Seahawks to a large degree is financed through federal dollars, that they would be uh, less likely to be uh, considering uh, locating marijuana facilities on their properties. Now, whether or not that ties into how how close uh, should they be considered to protect these, Mark has dodged the question a little bit, but uh, it's something to consider that they have effectively barred it from being located on their property. Well, the non rules don't prohibit or don't allow marijuana on the same property as residential anyway, so we would also not permit that. So he didn't say no, but he was it, was he asked that? Yes. Okay, so he didn't say no, he just said not our property. At, at the time the question was posed, it was focused on uh, the co location or the location of retail establishments inside their mixed use property. But, but there's something federal law for a thousand feet? So the Controlled Substances Act has a thousand foot drug free zone from several different uses, including public housing, housing owned by a public housing authority. Figuring 
understand you can't be less restrictive than the feds are. Um, but again, my opinion is to make sure that the objective land uses we have are appropriate. And we are, uh, they're meeting their intent by protecting the vulnerable population. Okay, so I guess that's our choice. Leave it as it is, which keeps the public housing authority in there and excludes tribal or housing housing to go forward with that. Okay. Okay, Can we get to the definition? <coughs> okay, so the second issue is um, variances. This ordinance for quite a while has included um, shifting the variance authority um, to the assembly, which I think was always the intent. We just kind of didn't really think about it at the time. But the question came up, well, how does somebody apply for a variance? Do they have to submit a new application with a new fee that comes to the assembly separately? Or would they, um, and if you look at page 11, or would it just be a part of their regular special land use permit application? Um, so the way I, oh, sorry, page six. Page six. Oh, under number 11. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so page six, and I have bolded um, a, sen a sentence clause, a sentence part that I have added to say, to propose that um, there not be a separate variance application with a separate fee, that it be part of the special land use permit for marijuana. Um, there are some pros and cons. Uh, the pros are that it's easier for um, the applicant to just package it as part of their regular application. Um, they don't have to develop a special, uh, another application. They don't have to pay a second fee. Um, they can just kind of, as part of their application, explain what variance they want from what provision. Um, it goes forward together. It kind of keeps it all packaged together and um, more efficient in that way. The only um, con I could really think of is that it does require, the applicant doesn't get an answer on their variance until they have put all of the information together that they need to ask for for their special land use permit. And that usually includes a lot of um, uh, documents that they need to pay for, you know, site plan drawings that they're hiring survey surveyors for and that sort of thing. And it may be a situation where they would want an answer on their variance before they invest in all of the documents that need to be prepared for the special land use permit. If we went that route where you could apply for a variance separately, there would still need to be a fee to cover, you know, public noticing and staff time and all that sort of thing. So I'm not sure we could avoid um, a fee that would be similar to the special land use permit fee. Um, we'd have to develop a new application document. I mean, these things are not, uh, they're relatively easy. Um, but it does kind of separate the variance from the special land use permit. You're seeing things twice. It's an opportunity to be, um, for things to be a little bit more confusing. So I think it would be, I, I don't know, I'd be interested to hear, I mean, I know nobody speaks for the entire industry, but I'd be interested to hear um, Janice's yeah. perspective. Um, well, I think if they want a separate <clears throat> analysis um, and they don't want to go through the hassle of putting everything in front of you guys, it would make sense to charge a fee. How are you really going to, Evaluate whether the the variance is not going to injure all you know protected pro like properties around. It's necessary if you don't have the whole scope of the issue. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to have to be incumbent on the the applicant to provide the whole scope of the issue. Because I don't see how otherwise you're going to really give it a fair you know review. Um, the one thing though, granting the variance does not violate state law regulations. So, what if, if the variance is you know we're 40 feet next to a Community center, um, and you, is that about? Is, so there, that, yeah. there are certain things you couldn't get a variance for, but some, like some of the special land use permits that the assembly has added, or uh, sorry, um, protected land uses that the assembly has added that don't exist at the state level. We can, um, okay. I think that would be something that the assembly could consider a variance. Okay. Um, okay. So that makes sense to me. Um, and the, uh, yeah, I think she has a good point that a lot of the information that would be submitted with a special land use permit may also be necessary to evaluate the variance. So it's possible they would have to do a lot of that work in putting the application information to go anyway. Can I ask a clarifying question that might help this her response a little bit? Are you, are you envisioning, uh, you mentioned earlier that if we bifurcate the process and they do the, the variance paperwork first, pardon me, that the variance as well as the Come before the assembly, so they will be 
seeing it again, right? That they would, yes, that they would be seen at separate times. You could see the variant right, first. they would essentially, they would see the, the material that's yeah. in the variant, they'd see that again. Is, is your concern that by seeing it again, there is the opportunity to change, modify, or do some of the uh, conditions of the variance? No. Just that it's duplicative. It's duplicative, okay. it can be kind of confusing. Hey, we, we saw this, I don't, you know, I mean, you guys see so much stuff that, that bring it kind of more efficiently packaged together for the assembly, I think works better. So, so I would recommend, as it's written here, I, I think the downsides are pretty small. Yeah, well, actually, Janet answered the way I would have answered in that, you know, as an assembly member, I want to have all the information in front of me if I'm trying to get this, all of it. So it may be they have to invest in some of those things, but those are exactly the questions I'm going to ask. I, I'm going to want to see, you know, drawings. I'm going to want to see where the other areas are, you know, what, what it's supposed to be. So I think it's just easier, cleaner, and we'll make better decisions if we have everything in one packet. Can we share from the clerk's office perspective of record keeping, it is a lot cleaner and easier to keep everything together um, for records request purposes. You don't have to look in multiple places in multiple years. So I would agree with keeping it together as well. Yeah, no problem. I'd rather keep it together. So, but, but someone who had a property that maybe they look at it and say, we're going to have that some variance They could come forward and look for variances totally separate, take care of that, and then come forward for marijuana. Right. So they have a choice. Right? So the authority that we're giving the assembly here is only from the marijuana standard. So they're, you can't grant variances from the regular Title 21 standard. So they would have to go to one of the other bodies if they wanted a variance from sidewalk requirements or landscaping or, or whatever. And now they're going to separate. So we, we haven't had a variance yet, but the way it's written, we kind of accidentally sent variances from marijuana standards to the Urban Design Commission. And, okay. Yeah. I thought we were talking about <laughs> the other issues too, but this is only from, like, if they're five feet, <laughs> some small distance. Four hundred ninety-five. Feet, it's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah. It's a wall or something. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh, I, I, I was just going to reiterate basically what Erica touched on, and that's that. Any variances that are related to sort of the physical aspects of the site would be going to someone else for review. Longer, different time frame. Whereas these, this variance related specifically to the criteria that affect marijuana establishments would go through. But you know, we've seen, we've been deeply involved in <coughs> those kinds of variances. I mean, the mm -hmm. um, Green Labs, the, um, the testing facility. Thank you, the Green Labs. Mm -hmm. we, we were deep into that. That was not a marijuana thing. That was parking and everything else. So is that? Are we going to be separated from that? That's going to be we still going to well, have, have, have any of those actually gotten the variants? No, yeah. we just yeah. got. Well, I mean, just for AK Green Labs, we, we just worked with Todd and right. about. The I mean, we've resolved about. all of those without ever getting the variants. But yes, you have been deeply involved. But there's never been variants, to my knowledge. Yet. No. And, and recall that was because an issue that should have been identified earlier in the process wasn't identified. So if things had all happened the right way, the assembly never, you know, it, it would have been addressed at the beginning and the assembly would have had to consider some sort of special action that didn't end up being necessary anyway. We really only dealt with it here. We didn't deal with it at the assembly Correct. level, so that was okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so we want to just recommend go with these changes. Then. Okay, so there's one other issue and it's on page five. Um, and I was, I was working on a draft of the AM that I had started last year, and I found notes that indicated that the assembly was interested in having the authority to modify the special land use permit at any time. That if you identified some major problem, that you could bring the special land use permit back before you would modify it whenever um, you wanted. And I realized we hadn't really, I, I thought we'd address that in some way, but I actually didn't find it. So. Um, I, I put some language in here. I really want to run it by the legal department because there are issues of, you know, once you give an entitlement, can you really go in and mess with it? I just want Bill Falsey's perspective. But at the bottom of page five, under modifications, 
um, we had a modifications ordinance where we kind of said most things will be administrative. Here's the couple things we want to come to the assembly. Those are A and B, and I clarified, clarified that those modifications would be submitted by the licensee, and then propose a new C, which basically which says, I'll just read it, at any time after a public hearing with written, published, and community council notice in accordance with the notice subsection. And I will point out that written notice does also get delivered to the top, to the, to the, um, licensee. Um, the assembly may modify and approve special land use permit for marijuana if the assembly finds such modification necessary to meet the approval criteria of subsection C7 above. So my recollection is when we were having that debate, I thought we put it in the licensing section. I think it needs to be in both. Okay, because we, we were, I mean, we were, we robustly discussed that, yeah. and I think the assembly was virtually unanimous that they wanted, if a problem arose, they wanted the opportunity to that's what we put in all kinds of okay we notified 30 days all that kind of stuff so it's kind of sort of it's not in you're right it's not here but that was the intent because yeah. that's where it is it's in the licensing section so so if it's in license so this is if someone's really a bad operator selling the kids or something pull that license yeah. we're good so this would be just dealing with the land use permit aspect, right? yeah and the, so and the example given to where you're going was the rustic goat for example when we were talking it wasn't necessarily a bad operator but if something was dramatically well maybe it was i can't remember yet. no it wasn't. yeah it, i was gonna say if something was dramatically impacting a neighborhood it's it close to a neighborhood the assembly should be able to pull back the license or if somebody maybe was a bad operator if something happened a public concern that the assembly found whether it's violations whether it's major problems we could bring it back to reevaluate we could either um, bring it back and add conditions, modify conditions, or we have the opportunity to pull a license. So potentially we could say, well, this isn't working out. You need to build a wall. That fence wasn't mm -hmm. enough. We want or, a visual barrier or something okay. like They're that. staying open till midnight and from, you know, 10 to midnight, it's noisy, lots of traffic, it's near residential or something. You want to say, no, you got to close at 10. And if we didn't do this, then we may have to say, we have one choice, pull their license. That's real or you wait till renewal period. So, yeah. You know, just based on past experience, I'd like to have this in as an option for the assembly. Because sometimes we can't wait till the next time they come up for renewal. It's a problem you do. Probably the rest of the code is they were too good of an operator. Yeah, oh, yeah. To go there. I know, I know. So they're asking for a license for marijuana now, too? No, no. <laughs> Only kidding. Well, they really have to build a big parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> right through on the street. Can you carry Jim? We all have to go ahead and do this for marijuana. I thought we were already, this was already in, so. Yeah. Um, so okay, so we'll go forward with this. Okay. okay, good. So we're done. Wait, I went, okay, so now we had temporary signs. Did we deal with that last time? Yes. Time? I think the agreement, the agreement was the committee had a basically said we're going to leave it with no temporary signs and if somebody wants to amend that on the floor and, and discuss it with the full assembly they would go for it but that the draft would, con would continue to say no no temporary signs. So did we have a good definition of temporary signs? Uh, that was the hang up there. I remember we, were, we talked about sound floor signs. I think those aren't allowed anywhere but downtown. Downtown, sandwich boards are allowed? Sandwich boards are allowed with a right of way permit. Right. Oh, anywhere? Is any, a, any sandwich sign that is in the public right of way requires a public right of way permit. Uh -huh. Can you put it on your own property? The corner? It's on your own property. Oh, is that right? I thought you were. So, temporary sign is defined as a sign that is designed to be used only temporarily and is not intended to be permanently attached to a building structure or permanently installed in the ground. These include, but are not limited to, political signs, special event signs, and for sale or leasing signs. Mobile and portable signs are temporary signs. Temporary signs may be displayed as window signs. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to have a sandwich board related to marijuana here. Okay, the temporary sign. Okay. But it did, it did. It said you could put a sign in the window? That some wi window signs can be temporary signs. Okay. So we decided to go that. And then we had, we had some exemptions for, like, the, you know, walkways to the road and stuff like that. So we were going to end industrial, you know, that marijuana cultivation. That's on page nine. And the debate was to we allow testing also to be sent. Right. Because that. And I thought you included. Yeah. 
again. <laughs> We 
those 10 uh, commercial districts are in two down, mostly down by the highway and then at the uh, New River Town site. And then the third commercial district is at the resort. Uh, and the resort sort of feels that it was an oversight not including that third commercial district and third would allow it to have positive uh, sales. sales. Uh, and they feel disadvantaged vis-a-vis the other commercial districts as far as their property values, the ability to uh, have some, the resort isn't interested in getting into the commercial retail business of marijuana, but they want, to, you know, if somebody came to them wanting to buy a piece of land to offer that service, they want to be able to do so. And that's the, the general reason why the person is going to And then you've, uh, what's your problem now with that? So we've introduced it uh, last month. I'm bringing it to the LUC Land Use Committee on Monday. Uh, I think it wasn't. Uh, there was some discussion on the, the introduction from the audience about you know whether they wanted to um, have that much additional land be available to retail sales. Uh, but generally, it seemed like the uh, the audience, that, you know, everybody in the L. You see, all the audience gets to vote on what's uh, the uh, committee. We're generally supportive. Um, uh, you know, there's a few people that have questions about it, uh, so we'll know more on Monday. Uh, so, so we'll go to the L. You see Monday, and then GDOS the following Monday after that, and we'll be looking for a, a resolution of support from those bodies, which we will then forward to John. Uh, and Eric, and, uh, not you anymore, <laughs> but John, and uh, and then if we, so we get a resolution to support them, we see that as community support for this, uh, this motion. Yeah, and just for people, the, the Girdwood Land Use Committee kind of sort of acts as their community council. That's for most regards. And it's a subcommittee of the GPO. And if I could just, um, I, didn't, I hadn't quite finished that. Oh, this, no, that's fine. This piece, I believe, is owned by the municipality, and some of the upper mountain area is actually owned by the state and leased by the resort. But I, you know, yeah. there's no, I mean, it's all mountain for skiing, so it's not like there's, I think, any concern about having a, you know, a store up in the, you know, town right. or whatever. And again, Alieska, GRST is mostly owned by Alieska, except for that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, GRST one has various ownerships, mostly Alieska, but there's uh, condos, um, J Shop, Jack Spratt. Uh, in reality, in GRST one, because there's uh, residents on some of the parcels, there won't be retail sales on those parcels. Alieska is not going to uh, sell on their parcel, so there's really only two or three plots in there that uh, would be, you know, sell, have the ability to sell marijuana. One is the most uh, the two parcels within the uh, Olympic Mountain. And uh, the Jake shop, I think. Um, just to hit one issue of this on the Alaska Land Use
did it. It's a little awkward. Why do you but, think just do this proposal is supported by this proposed by? I had no problem when I read it, especially because you know Gurkha is very unique and so much of the land is owned um, by Aliasa. And I think it's helpful to understand why an assembly member is bringing something like this forward. It's because the property owner is really asking you to. And so, from my perspective, because it is such a large, I mean, I would do the exact same thing, honestly, if Kaluna came to me and said, hey, we want to do this, I would make sure to put in their thing and to make push forward, not push on them by me, but push forward because they are asking. Well, you know, unique is the right word, I think. Uh, owns the properties down there and develops the properties. I, I just think if, if a person owns the majority of the property and wants, is petitioning us to to make a change to, to allow this, I, I don't see the reason why we wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. I'm still, I'm like, otherwise it stifles development. Where one has always been part of your way. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. I can take you back 30 years. What? They used to the decide they were in the off festival. Off the no politicians allowed, period. Did the forest mayor? Yes. Tom, Tommy made an exception from you last year. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're being culturally supported. <laughs> so, okay, so go ahead and forward with this. Thing. Oh, I'm sorry, um, so I stayed at the J shop like a few weekends ago above in that little apartment. And the magic carpet? Uh, little kids, the magic carpet thing goes right by it. So is that a protected? Because it's a, I mean, I guess it's not, because it's not a child, it's a ski resort. Yeah, so right, okay, let's go ahead and I, I would be okay. happy to say that was protected. Right. Okay, so. I would just be, you know, if I was going to represent somebody out there, I'd probably try to put something like that. Right. Well, in all of this, mm -hmm. we have Anything that happens in Gurdwood really has to get through the good work of the supervisors, which um, very engaged for okay. So I just I mean that's so I say if, if you get letters of support and you come to the assembly, if you get a letter of opposition, you're gonna have probably a problem. Yeah, we we understand that. I think um, at the minimum we'll get a uh, letter of non objection or we're going for a resolution support. And Erica, did you say this little the section up here? This is G R S T one two, the top section. That's not G R four. That's more like that. Oh, okay. So yeah. So what we're using with the little candy shape one that was kind of was on the last count. Oh.
on their um, dots, so you'll be able to both, the color will tell the status of the facility and the shape will tell the type of facility. So that's one thing that's coming. Another thing that's coming is on this map that we are going to add the community council boundaries so that um, you'll be able to see that. What will be coming short, well, I, I don't know exactly how soon after that, but hopefully soon, is the ability to select any of the community councils from this map and have a PDF be created that shows the community council and all of the marijuana facilities. Type of marijuana facilities yeah, in there. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, um, we used to do that for alcohol. Right, and I think, you know, when, when City View changed, the mapping got messed up, and so maybe, I don't know if this is a project you could do the same thing for alcohol yep. um, in the future. But, um, so I think the boundary, the community council boundaries at a minimum should be on here, hopefully even this week. Um, so that'll be something that you guys can look at very easily. I'm not sure how soon they'll be able to do the PDFs, but, um, but it's on their list of things to do. Um, in terms of this report, Eric, just real quick, I yeah. believe that um, in, in terms of workload, the turning on the PDF feature is relatively easy. Um, getting the community council boundaries by the end of this week. I think Tina was personally handling this no, project. Ken is going to do it. Oh, she passed yeah. off to Ken. Yeah. Okay, yeah. she's out of town. Right. Thank you. Um, this status report that I. Do you have a question? Can you, uh, with the map, were you dissolving? Shortly midtown, and it's going to be divided up into North Star and Spinard. So we need we're going to be doing these maps. We need to have a plan for that eventuality. Great, we, we will. And we'll look to the clerk's office for guidance on where those boundaries will be. It's a 36. So thank you. Um, so in terms of this status report, this is what I provided to you at the last meeting. Um, you have approved two more since then. Um, Ryan has now the ability to make this, so you just need to tell him uh, when you want it. And my call letter deserves it to be provided to you. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know if you want it every meeting or once a month. Once a month. Um, so, Rose, Bully, and I have been working on a report that talks about the financial portion of it, but we've kind of incorporated some of this into it, and we're going to um, see about doing a quarterly report to the assembly. Um, so it would be something that we could possibly kind of work with him on also, and, and maybe get that to the assembly on a quarterly basis, or what that was what you like. my mind when I was, I, I don't need it every meeting. I mean, I see it, and then what I've done is I just wrote on the bottom of it. <laughs> Two more, yeah. So, but I think quarterly would be um, that would be all I personally would. There is one that we have shows the ones we've been working on shows um, the application fees received from the state thus far. Um, so we kind of combine I think the most interesting points we've heard from the assembly what they really want to know about the statuses and try to. So that's kind of in the works right now, but. Um, so, so, no, when you say, so we would see their fee, but also tax revenue. So can you tell tax revenue by operator? That seems proprietary. Oh, we haven't done the tax. We only have the application fee in there. So that would be something maybe in the future, um, talking to Rose about getting that information. And kind of, we could probably incorporate that if that's something you'd like. Also, Mr. Chairman, just to point out that the marijuana taxation revenue revenue is recognized in the monthly revenue reports and we have not uh, finance has not convened uh, revenue uh, update yet because they typically don't schedule those until there's a couple months under their belt uh, at any given year so I believe probably we're going to do in March but I believe April those start back up and those go to, to the body so um, I'll share that with revenue with uh, finance as well so that we can maybe single it out or highlight it somehow so that as you get those revenue reports see them and then uh, I'll try and get Barbara or your shop clued in to, to the to the issuance of the revenue report so that you can have it. Okay. I would just like to yeah, even though we have it have it in that separate report, Andy, it would be great if when you're getting those numbers you put it all in one spot. Because I think a lot of members, especially the newer members that will be coming on, um, I think a lot of members don't aren't maybe won't be sophisticated enough to, to go to all the different reports. But if you have it in one spot, whether it's number of licenses, you know, fees, taxes, even if you just put a 
both of us, that's fine, I think. Uh, but I think it'll just be easier for, I mean, we have, literally have like 90 members or something like this. I don't even know. I mean, One that we're, it's on the topic list here, uh, kind of uh, Eric's sort of Erica's trans, transition and, and kind of where it goes from here. But one thing I would like to bring your attention is that during that Erica's tenure in, in uh, working in the Office of uh, Economic and Community Development, she's had the ability to really dedicate a lot of time to tasks like developing lists like these or these maps. And <coughs> with Erica's departure, it falls more on us, and we have a, a lot more limited ability to pick up that slack. Uh, we, we're dealing with rezones, we're dealing with all of the other things that happen. We'll do the best that we can, but we don't have the same capacity um, in Erica's absence to be able to pick up all of that slack. Um, no doubt. Just a heads up, really. Well, I think, well, when we get to that, I mean, let us know if we're asking you to consider resources. I think in the case with Mandy, though, I mean, you're fully mm -hmm. licensing part together, so that's going sort to of be an issue. And if it's easy to make this list now, you know what we're hearing, that you have the ability to make a list of... Uh, of the list operations. itself it is, it is, can be pulled right from the, the marijuana map, uh, the marijuana license map. So, um, when the issue comes in, it, it, you know, digging into your building permit and figuring out well, what kind of status yeah. is on that, that I just don't have the amount of time I got into that. Very and you can tell us, though, through a sure in process. Correct, yeah, they like yeah. passed their final inspection. Yeah, to, to me, I mean, because I'm going off my memory, but it was very detailed, which was great. But I think most assembly members are going to be looking at it which ones are approved and which ones are in process. I mean, I. I'm not, I can't speak for everybody else. That's what I would say. If it was me and I had a limited amount of time, that's how I would say it. it's as good as you can. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, what we can, uh, one of the things that we've started doing is, is having internal meetings around this topic of marijuana licenses because of the two sides of the house that the, these applications are falling into. Yeah, so we've already increased the cooperation and coordination between both building safety and planning. So uh, we haven't appointed a point person if you will within building safety but I think we could do that so that uh, Ryan or whomever is the point person in planning on the planning side would have regular um, coordinated updates to the assembly and wouldn't, we don't have to get to the level of detail uh, but they certainly can provide the most current information on the status problems with any particular um, uh, permitting etc. And you say to the assembly to run it through this committee? I think we would have to run it through this committee yeah. yeah. Some of that would just clog them. Yeah, no, I would definitely not. Okay, so any more on this? That sounds like we're good. Jen, you as a community council chair, are you watching? How, how are you keeping track of uh, Jen's chair at Spinard Community Council? How are you? Are you tracking how many operations are in the Spinard area? Is that an issue with the community council? Um, we we are. It doesn't seem like it's a an issue yet. I mean, I think suddenly. It, we got 50 applications. There would be some people who would be concerned for sure. Uh, we're signing agreements, communication agreements with all of the operators. Um, but I think right now it's, it's not necessarily an issue. Okay, so 50 would be like every thousand feet on an art road. Or it would probably be less than 100 feet. Yeah. <laughs> the Green Mile. Okay. Are you having trouble getting information? No, we're not. We're not having trouble getting information right now. I think we're we're just kind of observing. Are you looking at this map online? I have been. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh, okay. Anything else on this? Okay. You want to go to C? We broke that. Uh, I'm not sure how much I have to say. I mean, I, a lot of the stuff that I. Um, that I've worked on is, you know, like getting these ordinances done and processes hopefully running more smoothly. So, I mean, but I, I want to reiterate that, you know, Ryan and planning, they're not going to become me. Um, so I'm trying to, uh, you know, so, but Ryan is going to keep this map updated. Um, Mandy's going to, 
shepherd the after we go through this licensing ordinance, Mandy's going to shepherd, and this is a very preliminary draft, so she's going to shepherd the rest of it through um, the process, um, trying to pass off information to the people who might need that information. But I can't speak to um, what's going to happen after I leave, so I guess I would request for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, how many people are we planning to hire to replace this lady? <laughs> <laughs> It's going to take two or three at least, right? Um, so currently, uh, there's no plan to replace this position within OECD. Uh, if there becomes a need for additional horsepower uh, within the planning department itself to handle the caseload, that would be a separate discussion. But at this time, we're not planning on filling Eric's position. Precisely because of how you opened that question, it would take multiple bodies to amount uh, to, to recapture the depth of knowledge uh, in history with this and unless you all know this person out there that's an Erica clone, I don't have one in mind, so we don't plan to fill it, but we will be able to uh, reallocate resources if needed to provide greater bandwidth to the planning department and processing these things. It's a little bit of a gamble, I will admit, but I do believe that a lot of the biggest issues and hurdles have been addressed by this group, that there's a very functional process in place, the industry typically agrees, uh, and that the biggest rush of uh, processing has occurred, and now we're kind of, we've hit our stride. It's mile 12 of the marathon, and we're doing well. Don't count your miles on the marathon at mile 12. <laughs> 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 mile 22, you can start that. <laughs> Walk through it. And, and I and I put in a lot of it's 
actually so long. So, it was, yeah. so Mandy, is this your first? You agree? This Erica did. Okay, so this is yeah. your first go-through. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Erica, would you send it to Dean Gates? Yes. Because Dean's going to be taking yes. over their attorney. So. Yes. And since he writes a lot of the code anyway, yes. it's a perfect person to do this. Yeah, and when I had some questions, I sent them to both Bill and Dean. Um, so he's certainly familiar with some of it. Um, it's also partly wrong because I would, I would put in entire sections just because, again, this is pretty new, so it's not like we're super familiar with it. So I put in a bunch of extra text for context. Um, once it's more finalized, you can say, yeah, take some of that extra verbiage out or, or whatever. So, okay, so um, this beginning about the license restrictions, this for, on, on page one of ONO D1, this said, uh, municipality will not issue a license if any person named in section O2 B2 is prohibited, but we didn't have an O2 B2 because as we carried the state regulations forward in the municipal code, we decided there were some things that we were going to leave to the state to deal with and we weren't going to deal with it. And one of those was doing kind of criminal background checks. So the section that would have corresponded to B2 in the state code is resort or we just didn't carry forward. So what I've done is I've replaced that with basically the language from um, the state regs that corresponds to that. Uh, so we'll not issue a license if um, a partner holding interest in the partnership member of um, an LLC or owner of a corporation stock is prohibited from obtaining the license. So it's kind of just a verification, yes. But so if the other partners or investors in that corporation found out that the other guy had a felony, they could buy him out yes. and then they would still be able to move forward. Yes. Right? Okay. Thank you. We'll clarify that. Um, okay, so this is page two under o, uh, section two. This was actually proposed by Dean Gates to address the issue we had with Arctic Herbery when he had assembly approval, but he hadn't been issued his license, and he did something that violated uh, our code, and we had this debate about whether he was actually licensed or not. Um, and so to avoid that, legal is uh, suggesting that as soon as they submit a complete application, they can't do some of the things that you're prohibited to do when you're a licensee. So I think it, it provides clarity about when we can say you're a professional <coughs> code. So rules kick in at application. Yes. Yeah, once you've said, I want to open a retail store, you can no longer we'll go in. handing out free marijuana. Okay. Untested free marijuana. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, but they would have to have their license approved by the assembly already? No, no they have to have the license application. application. Just, just the application. Yeah. yeah. All right. Janet, any issues? What do you think? Oh, I was, sorry, I skipped ahead and was reading a comment from Sarah Oaks. Because uh, Pete brought up the point, if you buy an interest out, um, if it's more than 51%, you have to apply for a transfer to the state. No, this is way before that. Yeah, okay, so yes. we're, so I was just jumping ahead. But everything you said so far sounds good, but I was making a face at something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, section three um, is just some um, fixing things that are different between the state process and the municipal process. It's my understanding that the state process, they collect an application fee and if the application doesn't really work out, they keep the application fee. Um, and at the city level, we don't, like say the application is incomplete and the applicant never completes it, I think they keep the application fee. Whereas at the city level, we require that the application be complete before we will accept a fee. Um, so we're not. We have to get it from the state. No, 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 no. The city, the special land use permit fee. Um, so we review the application for completed because, I mean, I suppose it could be a policy change that they have to pay the fee just for even for us to, get, to review it for completeness. And if we determine that it's not complete and they never complete it, we keep the fee. But, it, but it's been for a long time what we've done is we don't accept, we don't keep the fee unless we're actually processing the application. So that's been the way it works. So when you're going, someone comes in to this desk up here, they went through this city, or state, and they'll come up with this big packet and drop it off with you, and you just flip through it at the desk right then and go, okay, it's a little longer than that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so uh, a couple of days. Yeah, we review uh, all applications that are turned in on Wednesday mornings and Friday mornings for applications. So, I mean, we can have a variety of applications in front of us, ranging from class to retail to compliance, to marijuana, and alcohol. 
go through to that time, we, we designate time that morning to go through all the applications to make sure we have all the pieces. And then we write the applicant a letter saying, yes, your application is complete, come in, turn in your copies, pay your fee, or your application is incomplete, do not accept it because it's missing A, B, and C items. And Title 21 gives a 15 day period for the municipality to determine application completeness. And as they said, they review this twice a week, so they're getting back to applicants within a couple days. They're not taking advantage of the entire 15 days. Okay, so it takes you a couple hours to go through the year or half an hour. It can take a while. Yeah. I mean, if we get, if there's a slew, slew of things that come in, that, uh, and, and, and the complexity of the application makes a big difference. So, so that would be, you'd have to, would that include going out measuring at that point? So they got an application, you go out Typically how that's been handled thus far is before the applicant turns in an application, uh, they'll contact us and say, I'm interested in applying for a special landing permit for this property. Uh, can you verify that there aren't any protected land uses nearby? And then it's way early, way early. Before they apply, uh, there have been instances where we've had an application come before us, and then during the analysis of the application, we find that there is protected land use that's questionable whether it meets that 500 foot separation distance and going to the measure of their making determination. Uh, but typically it's, it's done before they apply to this. If there is um, someone who is going to the state now in Ocean View, so a residential land across from a park, and wants to do a cooperation, so apparently they started the state process. And once they're done, they bring it to us, and it's like, sorry, but no. Some way to, I mean, they clearly have not done their own. But is there some way to, I hate to go through all that work just because they weren't there. Right. So, so we, we, in our internal meetings that we've been having between uh, planning and development services uh, yesterday, we actually, this is something I want to discuss with Jan, but even before they come in uh, or come to apply for the state, uh, submit a state application, that they could have a pre application with the municipality so that we can cover all those issues. Um, because a lot of these applicants have already been tied to a lease. They've already got state approval for a specific uh, property that may not work or may need a lot of improvement on the city side of it. Um, so if we can kind of get those problems uh, before they even apply to the state, uh, they can know what they're getting into uh, when it comes time to apply to in this case, you have someone who's just shockingly ill informed, so we go to the state. So you see this, are you going to say, better check with the city? Well, I will because I know, right. but I mean, I won't be able to do that for like <coughs> Fairbanks or, you know. But I, I wanted to point out that um, when the city receives their, the public notice that they're required to do as part of their state application to say, hey, we have an intent to open a property the clerk's or to open a facility, the clerk's office is sending an email saying, you know, we received this, by the way, there's a municipal process that you have to go through. We recommend that you have a pre-application meeting. Here's how to move forward. So they would have gotten that by now, this one in Ocean. Are you familiar with this one? I haven't heard of it. But, well, I don't know, Ocean What is the name of this? It's not exactly. It's not on John's Road. I think it's on Mariner. I don't know the name. But they have signs up on their property no. saying we've applied. I haven't heard of that level.
how renewals get approved. It says you have to you have to apply to renew, and then it's like, well, that's it. It just says apply to renew. So, um, to my mind, the assembly has said, you know, various members of the assembly have t have t spoken at assembly meetings when, um, particularly when there's been testimony against a marijuana facility, that you guys have said. You, if there's a problem, you know, come back and talk to us next year. You know, there's a there's a chance to come back and say this isn't working when they renew, which to me is kind of implied, not necessarily, but kind of implied that there's going to be a public hearing at the renewal. So I went and found it. Oh yeah, yeah, for the public hearing renewal, great. Well then I thought, wait, there's going to be, you know, right now there's going to be 50 of these, and eventually there could be a couple hundred. So and they all come in at the same time. So are we really going to do a public hearing for say? In five years, we have 200 of these. So um, I, right now, I just left it as I got it, which says there's going to be a public hearing. But I think we need to think carefully about this. Right now, with liquor renewals, they are not done with a public hearing unless there's some sort of. I, I, I don't know, like, is it the assembly has to ask it, or the assembly has to ask for it, or the assembly has to pull it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It just has so to be. We sent notice. Um, for renewals every year. So to all the community councils, they get noticed these are the licenses renewing within your boundaries. Um, if you want to request a public hearing, please provide a resolution by this date. And then the clerk's office will contact the representative or representatives of the community uh, of that area, of one of the assembly members that oversees that area, to show them that this has been requested and that assembly member will push that request forward. So that's a process, but my fear is that a lot of people are not hooked into their community council, and so that's not necessarily going to be transparent for every citizen out there who might may have a problem. So it, it, it's certainly an option. Um, another thing I thought about was maybe you know grouping these into groups of say 20 and having a public hearing on all 20, and anyone who wants to speak about any of those comes up. But that could get confusing for you guys if person one is talking about facility A and person two is talking about facility B and then person C goes back to A and I mean you guys would have to kind of be, keep really good track of while you're listening to the testimony but that is also an option. So um, especially because uh, we have consistently told everyone if there's issues we are going to you know to come back. I remember you saying it too people you know, listen if there's a problem come back and tell us next year. And so I wouldn't necessarily do it in groups of 20, but I would do it as items of maybe 10. Because if you have my suspect, what I suspect is going to happen is you'll only have, you know, a handful of people that come to testify on a specific operator maybe, and we can bifurcate it. And we can pass the rest of them, and then we can talk specifically about one. But that's an assembly function I mean, process. Um, but I, I wouldn't do them too big. You're right, Amy. You know, I'm older than about everybody else on the summit. I remember back when we used to meet weekly. Simply because we meet twice a month now, it doesn't mean we have to. If during renewal time we need to run in a couple other meetings, we have to keep people up doing that. When do we have to start renewals coming? We have to start seeing them in June. Why? 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 So, okay. uh, and that's really not our busiest time is during the summer. So, I, you know, again, if I, you know, if we have them as different um, public items, I mean, so many of the stuff, 85, 90 percent of what comes before us, you know, it's a public hearing and nobody says I mean, we just, you know, but if you have a group of 50, you're going to have a problem. I, I would say 14, 14A, 14B, 14C, and have them in groups of 10. But that's, and for most of them, we're not going to have a problem. It's just specifically we're going to have issues. I can think of one off the top of my head that we're going to have to have a hearing on. We have a we've had a problem with them since they tried to open up. Yeah. That's at least one. I bet I can guess. You yes, know, you here's know here's my thought, though, too. What are your thoughts, Erica? Um, I think when we get there through the first round or so of renewal, I think we could, I think by assembly process, we could morph it more like alcohol, where it goes on the consent agenda. But I think year one is the year where, because we've told so many people that you can come back when they're up for renewal and you can talk to us about it, um, is there a way we could we could structure it? I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, this could be written as the assembly may hold a public hearing, mm -hmm. and then this first year you could say, yep, we're doing it for everybody, mm -hmm. and then in the future, it could, some sort of process could be based off of community council, based off of land use complaints, you know, complaints into Anchorage Works, or, you know, I mean, you could develop something different for the next year. I can see, I can see in the future, you know, like I said, we, we have a lot of alcohol licenses, and that's exactly what happened, because we can pull one of them. Um, and put it on for public hearing. But the first year, I think it's important that we stay consistent in our messaging because we told everybody, basically, that you can come back and talk about it to us in a year. There has to be a reason for us to pull the license rather than people just don't like it. Yeah. Oh. There has to be some sort of uh, a violation comes forward from your board, Erica, that, hey, we went there, we've got a problem there, or from our police department. No, it's because people just don't like marijuana. Right. Well, and, and another, another thing to consider is what we were talking about earlier. You might have um, a licensee where you have to modify their conditions, and that's where you do it, right? So whether it is, or we could run you the know, we, yeah, we could say, you know, whether it's the traffic, their parking, whatever it is, if there's their hours. Um, so there will be things other than a violation that maybe have become a big community concern around a specific retailer or organization so keep the page in here. Well, um you know some of these businesses are not even going to be open before they have to come up for renewal so i, I don't well, easy, I, I don't think we need to have another hearing for them if they haven't even been open for business yet so just go ahead well that's what i say i think if you group them i think what's going to happen is you're going to have many groups of them that nobody's going to testify on at all i think you're going to have a handful of people that come on a specific issue um, like probably the one you're thinking about and that's why I think if we have in there rep for, rather than saying we are going to do it this way with the public hearing I think if we structure as may I think then the assembly leadership and um, can work with the administration and say okay this is how we're going to do next year you know, or this year and then next year let's start transitioning and maybe we'll be surprised maybe we'll have a ton of people coming out and if that's the case well then you know but I think it also gives you that discretion where you know, you have one specific person or group or whatever that you think is going to be an issue. So that one maybe already set up on its own. I don't know. But what, what kind of information would we get for each of these? We have 10 of these, we're going to have 100 pages or 20 pages. I think the biggest thing we do is we check the taxes and fines again. Um, I think we would want to know whether they've made any modifications and felt like maybe this would be a good opportunity for them to, if they wanted to make a modification, to kind of bring it forward to the assembly along with their renewal, but then it would definitely um, need to be a public hearing. But so, but no, it, it, right, but it shouldn't be hundreds of, it should be somewhere for their reference. We like to do the liquor license. If, you, if we've done a violation coming from the state, then we can take action on that. Or the city. I like that paper to be like orange. <laughs> so we can see any violations. So people who they they have a complaint with the marijuana place to go to code enforcement to call in there's a complaint file and we can see that for any of them. Because alternatively you could say once it had complaints, but automatically be triggered in public hearing. Like maybe that's for the next year though. Well that could be done by policy. I mean that doesn't have to be in code. And that's why I said I, I think we're, I can already see our, our process is going to be changing from year to year because it's just so new, right? And there's a lot of people. We have new assembly members coming. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll change it to May and make it more flexible. Yeah. So this is an uh, H. We'll change that to so a yes. May schedule. And there'll be changes in I, too. What would that be? Well, it says after a public hearing that we'll just have to be, like, hopefully taking that out or some public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, zipping through. Um, ownership change to be reported because we need to check taxes, fees, and fines on new owners. We can't use the state's form. We need to have our own form. Um, there's a couple of changes in here that are based on pending state regulation projects, and I've um, alerted Mandy to what those are and noted them in here. I put in the changes assuming those projects are going to be adopted. Um, so they're, they're just trying to keep our regulations consistent with the state regulations. So there's a couple things that are like that. Um, and on, I'm on page six, line 30. Um, so basically, you have a, you have 
they are one facility and they bring in a new investor. Um, so they're doing an ownership change. Doesn't um, it doesn't change the controlling interest? So it's just a it's just a notification. It's not an approval. But basically, um, we're saying that if that new owner owes taxes, fees, or fines, they have 30 days to address that from when we notify them. And if they don't, then the municipal clerk is going to initiate a license suspension. Um, section six. Uh, <coughs> This is about what, how you can grant or what transferring between uh, transferring licenses. And the title says application for transfer of a license involving non-natural persons to another person. So to me, that means partnerships, um, you know, LLCs, corporations, not individual license owners selling to another individual. Because I thought that was where we weren't going to allow transfer, and that was where the new person had to apply for a new license. So. The state has given us some information, and I don't think it really matters what the state's doing because this is what we're going to do. So I don't. The state's given some information that I thought was confusing, but I um, wanted. This is really more of a question to legal about whether they feel that there should be some clarity in this section. So if we can just kind of leave that on hold, and see what legal says. So you're saying if one of the partners is incorporating or something like that. Well, that. That there's a there's a there's a process for if five people are in a limited liability corporation and one person wants out and wants to sell it for someone else, you don't have to start all over. But if one person owns the license and they want to sell their business to one other person, I I think the rules say that that want that you can't sell the license that that one new person has to start over. Well, so I, mean, I was looking at this the other day in the state regs, and so there hasn't been a form, you know, the regs say a form prescribed by the board for transferring a controlling interest. So anything over 51%, right, is a controlling interest. That has to be approved by the board in writing. Um, so if the board did approve, like, transferring 100% of, you know, a license from one person to another person or from one person to another entity, say, if you were a um, if the board approved it, but there's a process for that, you have to go and get that approval for a transfer, that would make sense. Also, because if we ever have a moratorium, we need to be able to allow for, you know, if we have cap licenses, like liquor licenses, we need to be able to mechanism to sell licenses like alcohol licenses, but for approval, right? So, I mean, I think what you wrote here covers it, though, because it's, any transfer that's a controlling interest transfer has to be approved and ready by the assembly. So can I, can I ask a clarify question? Yeah. So when you just said you have to have a mechanism to sell licenses, the assembly, we did not want the licenses to necessarily be transferable. Well, without your approval, right? Right, but we're, we're not going to get into what we got into the tax industry. That's why if you have a, a new owner coming in, they got to go through the process again. So what we were talking about when this happened, it's like, Husband owns the marijuana facility. Wife is there. Wife works uh, works there every single day. Whatever he dies, she normal people would say she should be able to go ahead and assume the license. That's why we put that in there. And so it wasn't so. I have this marijuana license and like a taxi license. I'm going to sell it on the market. You don't want a secondary market right. to be Right. Marijuana. We did not. So so this is when it, when we say a limited basis. I mean, we really meant a limited basis. So I guess like I'm thinking about the situation where like a marijuana establishment is grandfathered in, um, like you know they're operating in a protected use moves in. Now if that person dies or, or whatnot or there's no way to do it or wants to retire or wants to retire and, and pass it down to their kids, how do we do that without taking them out of the? Well, there's a difference between the license and the special land use permit. Okay, so it's. So, so that special land use permit is different from the license. So, again, if it, it's the same example, the same example with a kid or or with a wife, if the husband dies or dad dies, he should be able to pass on to it. And we recognize that. That's why the assembly wants to be able to say, okay, in this situation, but we do not want to create a secondary money market for licenses. Because that's where I'm at. I have a lot of clients that are are now getting all concerned about their wills and how they're going to do that. So that's kind of been on my radar um, a little bit. So yeah, that's on our radar here. That but the goal here is, I, I, I'll just tell you, I won't I won't be supportive of a measure to create a system in which people can just sell their licenses willy-nilly. Okay, you so, know, so, 
But like the 51, like if we didn't drive the yes, We do not want a secondary market to be created with marijuana rights. We specifically wrote it so they could. Chairman, I think Mandy would probably speak to this, but in a lot of these cases, or at least in your hypothetical case, it's, it would be a business entity, and the business entity is outside of our regulation. And so the state of Alaska, different corporations, if there's a death in the family, um, typically there would be a change of ownership of the business. And it would not, as far as I know, Mandy would not show up on our radar. And, and should and, and should be because the license is tied to that business. So to answer your question, Jana, if the husband dies and wills the business to his wife, that would be handled at the state corporation, state division corporation, and in your court's office, I believe, to update the business ownership record, but it should not affect the underlying uh, special land use permit. Is that correct, Andy? Well, Unless it's unless it's the controlling interest, yeah. I mean that's that's kind of the crux. Yeah, I mean because the controlling interest is changing from one name to another name. That's kind of the problem. Or it is kind of the answer. <laughs> Can we recommend we need more work on this issue? And keep you want to move on? Huh? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to make sure I get through all this. So more work. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, on page seven, just some adjustment of the language uh, to clarify. Um, uh, sec so the bottom of page seven, top, top of page eight, section seven, relocation of premises not allowed. Um, you can't relocate your premises to any other premises, and that's all good, but what if you had, I, I just, and I don't know if this is even something we wanted to worry about, so you don't have to answer this question, but like, if you have a cultivation facility and a retail facility in the same building, and for some reason, you decide it makes better sense to switch them, you're actually changing your license premises in a way that probably isn't that big of a deal, or say you're in part A of a strip mall and you wanna to move to part D because it's a little bigger, um, so you're on the same property, you know, do, do we want to, like right now you'd have to start completely over because there would be no, you'd be vacating one license premises and opening a whole new license premises even if they were in the same building on the same property. And I'm not saying they should be able to do that with no oversight, but I'm wondering if we really want to say they want to start over. So I, I don't know if that's going to be a problem, but it's just something to think about. So I flagged it. I think we gave department director discretion with some of these uses. Not, not with... Move, because this says you may okay. not relocate okay. to any other premises. Well, I think we said if it was a ten percent change or more. Right, you can you can make your premises a little larger, but you can't totally vacate this premise here and go to that closer, premise. Closer to I have a couple ideas, but I know we have a lot to go through. Yeah, so that's just ideas. Um, I'm going to dump this in Mandy's lot, but the public participation, the public hearing notice doesn't really do a good job of giving a deadline. There's a suggested date if you want stuff sent to the assembly ahead of time. So I think that worry just with all the massaging. Um, public hearing, this is notices about renewals. So I'll make that consistent with what we've decided to do about public hearing and renewals. Um, I just removed some language about protest because people don't protest to the assembly, the assembly protests to the state, so it's just taking out some language. Um, clarity of process that after the assembly approves a license application, they can't begin operating until they've passed inspection for compliance. That's more um, clarity. Uh, fees and refunds, there's some questions here that I need to ask the um, legal department about. I don't really know what the phrase, provided the fee shall only be due as authorized by AS 1738 or another county state law. So I don't really know why we added, we the MOA added that. But because we were proposing a public hearing for license renewals, I did propose a fee which would cover um, noticing. So I don't know how you want to deal with that. Um, so, can I have a question? That, so, for reinspection, that would be say they went in and did the initial inspection, and there was something that didn't meet, wasn't up to code, so they had to go back to make sure they had updated it. I'm, I'm on page ten. 10. Okay, yeah. So I, I was still on nine. Oh, I'm sorry. So you'll have to think about the fee issue. I'm um, on page ten. Yes, the idea. So the idea here is that the 
so it said basically the assembly or administrative hearing officer may suspend or revoke the license issued under this chapter, refuse to renew a license, and impose a civil fine. So is this saying that the assembly can suspend a license or impose a civil fine? Um, we, so I've tried to clarify that, say, the assembly may refuse to renew a license and the administrative hearing officer may suspend or revoke a license. Um, I know you guys have talked about wanting to revoke a license, and I think we'll have to work with legal to figure out how to get that in. But there is usually there's this process where when you want to um, suspend or revoke a license, you go through the um, stuff in Title Three about administrative um, oh, so I, thought, I thought we already put it there. I mean, and Jan was looking at me like, Whoa. Yeah, I thought you guys could remove us. Yeah, so. that, that was exactly the assembly in our license. We had a big discussion about this. And we said, that's why we put the public hearing in there. And it's my understanding today, if we want to revoke a license, we can do it. We just have to give 30 days notice to have a hearing. And I told and, you how to do that, too. Well, that's what we've been saying the whole time. Good question. But, but are we saying that's not actually a code? No, I, I don't. I, you should talk about legal. I think we're going to have to get. I, I think it's there. Yeah, I think it's there. It may not be clear. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, there, was a, there was a situation ongoing where the state confiscated some cannabinoids or whatever they are that are supposed to be used for, or can, can be used for medical marijuana or something. So, yeah, so see, it was from derived from hemp under the 2014 Farm Bill. And, you know, I knew, and that's why really only one of my clients who didn't listen to me got in trouble, but. I knew that was not cool under the regulation, the regulation so I can hemp if so there's any marijuana. Any cannabis something something plant is the type of plant. Um, so those have basically those kind of been put to rest as like, okay, we all know now, everybody's on the same page. And so my understanding is something's gonna happen out of those notices of violations that I mean I could be off on that. Um, but I mean so yeah, those that issues kind of put to bed everybody. Um, okay, so so more work will have to be done on section 20. On section 21, this refers back to um, on, in section 2810A, the municipal clerk can just take action to suspend or revoke a license under a very specific circumstance, which is if the licensee is convicted of violating um, O1OD2, which I forget exactly what that is, but uh, or if the so I think it's if they have a felony or something, and then so so if they get a felony, the clerk can just Pull, yank the license in that one situation. And so it needed to be clear under procedure for action on license suspension that the clerk doesn't need to initiate service of an accusation um, under this very specific circumstance in A10A. They, they committed the felony. Right. Or they didn't disclose that they had a felony. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, the Section 22 seizure of a marijuana marijuana product, um, Jack Frost requested this change in D, which allows the uh, code enforcement to tell the marijuana facility that they have to hold the seized products in the facility because he's concerned that the municipality may not have space to, and, and person power to care. Like if you seize 100 plants, you may have to give them back, so you have to make sure they stay alive. Well, we don't, uh, we don't want to do that. We may not have a place to put it. We don't have the personnel to take care of it. So the idea would be you make the licensee, you know, kind of say, okay, these are seized, you can't sell them, but you can continue to take care of them and while it goes through the process of whether or not there's an actual violation. So let me ask you this. So what if, what if it's a, a different product other than a live plant? This doesn't say they don't, this doesn't say they have to, um, because I'm thinking, what, you know, what if they have something that is okay? Right. So make it optional. You know, they might, Jack might say, the AP needs to come drive this or something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There might be something where if you leave it there, it may disappear. I don't know. Well, if they if they disappear, something that's That's inventory, then they're in the public. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll make it optional so that they can determine whether they want to leave the 100 plants or confiscate the box, one box of something, something. Um, and then the last one, I believe that Title Three says a final decision of the assembly under that Title Three administrative adjudication section can be appealed to the assembly, uh, to appeal to court. So, but I, again, that'll be something else that we check with legal. So those are that's the 
general package. Obviously, there's still more work to do. Um, Lucky Manny's going to take the lead on that. But I will, before tomorrow, I will um, communicate with legal, send this to them, CC Manny, identify those issues that we have, you know, that need um, more more work so that they're looped, uh, both Bill and Dean, so that they're looped into this. Six months after you're done getting all settled in, come back and talk to us again. Because you can modify your document for us. Anytime you want me to come talk to you, things. I would be happy to come and talk to you guys. So just offhand on this, so this is a first draft, so you're going to make changes, you're going to shop it around, they'll get back to us. What's our schedule on this? Well, I would say, well, we need to have this done before. Right. <laughs> yeah, we need to have this well, before renewal. So I would say, if they're coming up in June, we want to make sure we have this done by the end of May. Um, but I would also say, and you know, I, I, I don't see this as complicated as this was, frankly. Um, it may be, but I know you're making me nervous. We, we spent a lot of meetings on the land use. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I don't know. I think so. But I, I look at this, and, and my understanding is being on the marijuana committee that was doing the listing and the land use to originally help draft this. I. I fully believe right today that I, we have this and it has a right to revoke a license. So I think it'll help. But the question is, did we put it in all the right sections? I think this is where, what I'm hearing. Dean is thorough on that stuff. He's very thorough. So we're lucky to have him come on board. Okay. So we're on track for that. In March, we can go through this. You know, and we should try to pass I this to, Well, I have to tell you, yeah, we should try to well, pass we'll this to the new, the new members coming on, we got to factor that in. Exactly. So I would say our, our goal should have this done relatively soon, but we need, you know, we need to make sure it's right. What so is, does what? that mean Dean Gates is sticking Well, I think Mandy's going to be part of the government. I mean, Dean okay. and or Bill will provide the legal input okay. that we need. Maybe you will give us legal advice. Huh? We're March 9th. We're March 21st. Uh, yeah, no matter what, this we're, is probably going to So the first meeting in April is what, the 8th or 9th or something? It's the 11th. <coughs> 11th. <coughs> and then the 18th and 25th. So the 18th was certified the election, right? Yeah. And then the 25th is the first one. So this may end up getting pushed into May it's because you're going to have you're going to have the first number. quarter reservation is coming on. Yeah. So basically, this should be a very high priority to try to answer all our questions and get this back before this committee as soon as we can, um, because you know it would be ideal if we could do it before the election, but I don't think it's possible. Do it as far as introducing the family. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I would love to have the older members. When I say older, I don't mean age. They just speak, you know, <laughs> the continuity. Um, but I don't think it's possible. So it's just I, I think um, our next. A meeting here that's on your next agenda, right? When is our next meeting, John? Uh, we have it this saying? year where we might do on March 16th. Okay. Is that a week from today? Do we have like we have licenses? Yeah. How many? We have two. So would you Three. we could see the simple changes here, but just get back from Dean and others and we'll finally review it again next week. I can harass him. Do we need a tech? <laughs> Well, well, we only have two licenses. We might have time to look at something. I think we have time. I just want to make sure we get our house. We look at this committee. This committee is solid. Each gentleman running. If he gets reelected, our four is still here. So that's not going to change. So do we need it that fast? I don't want to pressure them. Well, she could at least give us that data. I can do as much as I can do, and then I'll let you know what's, what's been done. Um, I think Eric is going to do a bunch of this, and I'll work with her on anything she needs help with before she leaves. Somebody who, uh, How many hours do we still have yet? Hours? Um, yeah, yeah, day and a half. Okay, she had no problem. <laughs> okay, so you'll send this to but I, I don't want to pressure staff to have this all wrapped up in legal opinion in a week. No, we can get it back to us by the end of March if we were on track. Mm -hmm. So don't tell people because we've got a lot to do right now. Yeah. Uber and all those other things that we can do. Uber made it amazing to here. here. Yeah. We may be solved by the state. Take us out of the blue. And I just want to remind everybody that next week is spring break. So those people, there might be people out of town, or there might be people, you know, that have kids home. And so. Spring, spring break starts this Saturday or this Friday. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm not going to be able to see it. Anything else for over here?
there is a, a potluck at noon in the mayor's office. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.